Welcome to Guys Talk Knives Live, episode number 141. I got the boys in the house. I got Mr. Patrick Rollins, lead instructor for Randall's Adventure Training, and Mr. Shane Adams, who I always ask, what is your title now? I, <laughs> I, I, I've given myself a new title, and it's marketing, marketing director okay. slash utility player. What is utility player? Whatever it needs to be that day. <laughs> I used to go do it. Go do it, Shane. Go do it. Basically, whatever Jeff and Mike don't want to do, that okay. normally comes the, It just goes to Shane. Yeah. Guys, you know these guys. We're brought to you by Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com. And if you've been paying attention on our YouTube channel and now on Facebook, isn't that right, Isaac? We're putting them over there now. Yes, you're going to see the Fireside Series. And it's we're starting off with these guys doing some <laughs> cool stuff. I'm going to hit you first, Patrick. What is this Fireside Series? What is it about? Uh, just tips and tricks and pointers, uh, just skills that are good to know if you're out in the woods a lot, you know, fire building, we're going to do some shelters, um, just all around good information to have. So are you going to teach feather sticking? Yeah, we actually did one a video just a little while ago. Nice, 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 nice. We're awesome. looking for suggestions too. No, that's awesome. Guys, if you have suggestions for these guys that you want to see them do, whether it's uh, a nice little jig out in the woods, <laughs> or it is some kind of a nice survival skill or bushcraft skill, let us know. Just mention it in the comments, send us a message. We will pass it on to these guys and they will attempt to do it. It's kind of cool right there. So I have a question on those lines though, because I think sure. it's really important. I think sometimes that uh, people are not prepared for adventures out there, and I know that you're an expert and you're an expert from what, right? So I, I would wonder this. And so, are there specific knives that you carry for specific things? And let me give you a hypothetical. It's just, and you can tell me what SE knife you would bring. So it's a day hike. You're with your family. You got a three-year-old and a five-year-old, right? And uh, you're at the uh, picnic table before you leave, and you have the giant bag of snack-sized chips that has the little bags inside. Yeah. It is a survival moment if you don't get that bag open. Which SE do you need? Uh, the SE5. <laughs> SE5. Gibbs and Axe. <laughs> Day, gives an axe. They hike uh, with kids, something small, <coughs> something that's smaller, three-inch blade. Nice. So then, let's that leads me right to Shane. Tell me about what's on the table right here, man. Uh, so we, this is our blade show offerings that we're still not ready to offer yet. Uh, this is, I mean, we're being honest. Uh, we've been COVIDed like everybody else, so we are Rona. experiencing uh, COVID-related issues. Uh, from like everybody has an increased volume in sales in our knife industry, just like the gun industry, everything else. Uh, on top of supply chain and other stuff, this is the CR 3.0. I think we've already, you know, we've talked about this a little bit. It's an updated new version of the CR 2.5. We've added it, uh, increased length to 3.0. You go two for us, Isaac. We'll hit right here and show. There we go. So we have uh, G10. That's our G10 option, and it has a contoured scale. So we go up top. We mm -hmm. see we've given it some nice little curves there. Uh, Really ergonomic, really fits good in the hand. Uh, we also have the uh, rustic brown micarta, which is the same material that we use in the JG5 and the PR4, just with a different texture. Mm -hmm. um, I think this knife, obviously... In this is a full redesign, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's full. Because I noticed this little tail on the end of the handle right here, and it felt so good in hand while I'm holding it. It wraps right into, the, into uh, that pinky area. At least on me, I have medium-sized hands. I don't have tiny hands, uh, but I also don't have Patrick Rollins-sized hands. <laughs> Uh, but that just feels really, really good in hand. I think this knife, not just for like a bird and trout knife and a game knife, I think it's going to find its way into the EDC community as well. I think you're going to see a lot of people start to gravitate towards this. Right. Do you have any idea what price range we're going to go into in this one? I, I have no idea at uh, all. We'll, we'll go Zancudo-ish. Zancudo-ish. Here's the other version that I have. Yeah, right that's the rustic the brown micarta. So we have G10 and micarta options. Uh, S35 carries the same, anything with SE on it carries our warranty, so it doesn't matter what stainless steel it is or, or, or what the steel is. If it's got our logo on it, it's going to be American made and, um, and uh, warranty for life. So that is the CR3. 3 -0. And yeah. then we've got, also, I'm going to move these out and move these in so you can see a comparison here. That is an Ashley game knife with a little bit of a redesign too, right? So, so same blade shape, but we have gone back and added some some contouring to the scales there uh, a little more hand feeling gives a little more er ergonomic feel s35 steel uh, we we've heard people's request uh, there are a thousand different steels out there we could have gone with you know like ramalama ding dong steel we know that but <laughs> we chose to go with s35 and we hardened it to crucible's suggestion 
Okay. And so what we have heard for years is to maximize, we, people want better edge retention and they want stainless steel. And so we gave them that. Okay. But we did not back the heat treat down. It is a hardened to 60 heat treat. Um, so use accordingly. Mm -hmm. It will take a lot of abuse. It will hold an edge well, but there is a yin and yang to that, to that rock will scale. And, and people just need to know that. Uh, we've done our video of breaking the SC3. I right. think that's probably one of the best videos we've done. It's our highest viewed video. Uh, and it was just our, our desire to make sure that we're putting our stuff through the test, through the ringer, so we can educate our customers. My question here is, is that thicker than the original game knife? Uh, in, in the swell right here it is. This I, I, is the same. I was thinking it's steel. Same. Steel wise is the same width? Oh, it's the same. Mm -hmm. Nice. Just keep, just keep going, Isaac. I, I can smell his pit right by me. It's right on us. He's fixing the camera as we speak. Oh, it's got dark. It's got dark. <laughs> yeah, TC over there is going to push go to one. Let's see. Y'all get a full view. Oh, look at that. How bright it is now. Woo! Look at that. Now, can you guys see these now? See, no, I felt like, and I don't know why, maybe it's just I haven't held them in a while. I felt like, like there was a st thicker steel on this So, version. So up here, it's uh -huh. the same thickness as traditional. So if you have a Kydex sheath, uh -huh. it still fits. It still fits. So, but the handle's got some contour but to it. you've got some What I was looking at as the steel, and I don't remember the, the game. I, I just, maybe things just look bigger <laughs> once you've been through Rona. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> okay, come back to one here, guys. Uh, I like these. Um, I, I know that the hunters love these. Yes. Absolutely love these, and they again have no idea when they're coming. Yeah. So, so uh, the, yeah, the answer to all your questions is I don't know. So here, I'll let you. As soon as I know, our people will know. I said this to you before the show. I feel like this ends up being a good EDC. Mm -hmm. I, I really feel like uh, I think that needs to come back more in fashion. Once you've done it for a little while, you don't even realize that you're carrying a knife this size. And whether you carry it horizontal cross draw, scout carry in the waist belt. Reverse carry a knife that has this this uh, pattern. I guess th it takes up very little real estate, mm -hmm. and and so therefore it can be put in a lot of different places. And it's going to be stronger than almost any folder out there. I mean, you'd oh, have absolutely. to really have a chunk and a heck of a, a lockup to beat a fixed blade. And it's always ready as soon as it comes out. Do you have a question? What what's the the, the new shot show one called again? So this is the three R the CR three point oh, and then the more. AGK both okay. in S thirty five. Hit me with two there, brother. So then you've got it's just mind thing that happens when you're trying to do something on a monitor that's off to the side. It hurts my head. So yeah, here's the lineup that I have on the table right there. Nice, nice, nice one with that one. So it's SE as well. And I, like I say, our new 3D contour scales give a good grip, good texture. Right. Uh, not not too rough, but but um, just right. I, I think that's the way I like it. Me too. <laughs> Goldilocks. <laughs> okay, so I have one more thing. We're, we're going to get this out of the way right away because it is, I'm going to make these guys handle our other knives for the show, but I want to deal with the SC stuff all up front so they don't forget it as we go out. you got a giveaway for us too, don't oh, you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Show us this thing. You can hold it up and point it right there. We don't have to. We don't have to put it down there right yet. We can hold it right here. What the heck is this? Somebody wrote all over this we did. knife. We did. We did. We ruined it. <laughs> Burnt it. We burnt it. Uh, Patrick and I signed it, and then we had to add the beater se ha se hashtag. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, this is the knife. What did you, what we use this, Patrick? We did this, uh, use this it one. Clearly has been batoned baton with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll show you guys down here on two. You can clearly see that this thing has been b beaten just a bit. A little bit. And uh, there is uh, the signatures, and then on the back you got the hashtag Beater Eshi, as Shane Adams likes to say. Yep. Yeah, Beater Eshi. Yeah. Right there. That's cool. We're going to give this thing away. What do they need to do to win this thing? Got a, got a video coming out? Isaac's dropping this on me right now. He's going to put a video out. If you're going to leave a comment on that particular video, it's coming out, and I will pick randomly from that. We'll let you know when that happens on the video caption as it comes out. Look for that on both Facebook and on YouTube. Yep. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns? Nothing? They got, got a sheath yet? Do what? On the, do we have sheaths for that? They were asking about sheaths. Uh, yes. Are they just the, are they the leather ones or the Kydex ones? Yes. Okay. That's they all they both. need to know. I, I, what I'm saying is, is I'll let you know whenever I know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> yes, there will be a sheath. Yes, there will be a sheath. <laughs> <laughs> they are skinning the baby seals right now. Yes, for them. yes. 
Hey, I mean, Take honestly, that. honestly, this COVID thing has oh. I, has affected us. I mean, I, it's affected the whole world. But even now, every time we we start trying to come out of the the stuff, out of the the, the COVID funk. It, it seems like every day there's a new obstacle. So where is Rowan? Rowan's out west. In Idaho. Right? In Idaho. So then they were probably shut down. But this is a pandemic. It is. Uh, no, it is. It's, it's totally. Uh, it's totally global. <laughs> you know but means, right? I know that a lot of places, like I know that case that we're going to look at today, they, they Pennsylvania shut them down for a period yeah. of time. They could not make anything. Nobody could even come in the factory. I know it's happened all over the world. I know that some of our trading partners that are outside of the country, uh, whether that would be Italy, uh, whether that's uh, Germany, even China. Uh, we had delays coming into the country because of COVID. So, well, you get raw yeah. materials. We're in Idaho. Our factories in Idaho, they've been fairly unscathed. They've not been out without a few scrapes with this stuff. But the problem is, some of our suppliers for raw materials mm -hmm. are in places that are completely locked down. Mm -hmm. And so it has certainly. So suddenly, an islet that was so plentiful yeah. is no longer Scarce. plentiful. Yep. So. And on top of that, you have a higher volume of orders, which we're fortunate for. Yes. Uh, but at the same time, that creates an added strain on supply chain. Don't you think else. that's interesting? Because uh, we've experienced that here too this year with the night with the COVID with COVID going on the way it is. The pandemic has happened. We've seen a lot more knife orders. We've seen oh, in yeah, general yeah. a lot more people online buying and online participating, and that's fantastic. We've been trying to grow this community for a very Thank long you. time. We yes, appreciate absolutely. It. Uh, so that's always good. That's, that's something positive, a silver lining in the cloud that's been over us. But hopefully we'll get through this and move on and do some really cool stuff from here Seems on Seems like out. people have had more time to get out and use their stuff as well. And that's, that's a trend yes. I've seen too, where people have been able to, like, I've just noticed people out more, it mm -hmm. seems. So how about the class, have the classes been happening and, and trainings and, and that kind of thing? What's going on there? We've been open back up for a little bit over a month with the classes. We kept having to reschedule, push them back further and mm -hmm. further and further. And so now what we've run into is all the rescheduling is taking, pla taking place in the last half of the year. So we took a year's worth of classes and just crammed them in the <laughs> wow. last five months. Is this why you were so exhausted when this we is, talked the this, other day? Yeah, this is with the black bags. <laughs> we were earning these black bags. Uh, uh, that's hilarious. I come home and I empty dirty clothes into the washer. <laughs> and then I put them in the dryer, and then I put them back in the bag I just unpacked, wow. and then I, I kiss my wife, and we leave again. I, I've learned through this pandemic, unlike you, or you're having to go do this stuff, I've learned that I can wear the same clothes for three or four days, and <laughs> no one cares. I can too. The, I just smell differently. The, than the, you the do. cat doesn't care, <laughs> not at all. And yeah, that was the one wish they had for us was to bring the cat into the studio when we came back to the actual yeah. studio. She's yeah. been visiting on a regular basis. No. Not going to happen. Let's jump yeah. into these knives right here again. We're brought to you by Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com. I like to bring guys in from other knife companies to handle other knives just to see what they think of them. Uh, we've got five great knives to look at. We're going to start off with a brand new brand that we have been carrying for a while now, uh, probably for the last two to three months, called Concept. I uh, said it wrong originally, Cancept, just like Patrick Rollins did before the show. Uh, it is Concept, K-A-N-S-E-P-T. We are looking right here at a shard. Uh, and this is a premium knife from a company called Concept. Uh, we're going to look at it on two and I'll tell you guys all about it. So this knife features a 3 inch N690 stainless steel drop point blade with a satin finish. No, I'm reading the wrong one. <clears throat> it features a rewind. It features a 3.5 inch CPM S35BN stainless steel Warncliffe blade. To me that looks like a reverse Tanto. Does that look like a reverse Tanto to you guys? Sorta? Kinda? Sorta, yeah. Sorta kinda? Um, it does have a flipper, which is a, uh, it is, I'm sorry, it is 0.15 inches thick. It does have a manual flipper and a thumb hole opener. There are ceramic ball bearings in the knife, so this thing flies open perfectly each time. Boom. It is very, very nice right there. Um, the handle's really the kicker on this shard. That is black titanium. Titanium on both sides. It is a frame lock. Titanium clip here as well. But this is actual copper inlay. They chamfer the channel right down the center of this and so this is flush and smooth in the handle and that is actual copper that will patina. You have some uh, kind of brass anodized hardware there and then the spacers and tube spacers on the back are the same way. This knife closes down to 4.46 inches closed which makes it a nice slim ride but it is a full size EDC. It is 7.96 inches overall and then it weighs in at just 4.08 ounces because of that titanium. You're talking about a $196 knife. Uh, from smkw.com. And of course, you can find that link up there. That is the Concept Shard. I'm going to pass this one around. What do you think of this? I know you're not, you, you guys are into your, I like to see what people who are normally fixed blade guys, who are normally um, hard working knives, think of premium knives like this. Very well made. 
And you can feel it, right? You yeah. can feel it when you hold it. Yeah. <clears throat> the, at least the materials are there that it feels well made, and it takes almost nothing yeah. to flip it. Clean, clean lines, I guess uh -huh. you would say. Uh huh. It's pretty amazing that they can get that copper inlay into that handle like that. Oh yeah. Um, so this is titanium. Yes, titanium. Black You've got a steel insert, of course, for that frame lock there that'll help you um, keep that thing open. Very nice. I'm gonna pass that down to him. I love knives that patina. <laughs> Me too. That's my thing. That's I just love knife that takes on the carry. It looks like it's already started to patina just from us. And we've had it in. only out for about a week. Yeah. So it was sealed when it came, so it was nice and shiny, and it has started to do that since we got it. Centering's nice on it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I'm a, I like knives, not just fixed blade knives. Right. And and so I, uh, this is a, a nice knife. Uh, it's got some nice touches. Had it been me, I'm a sucker for aesthetics. I probably would have just done black hardware. Cause I that, agree with you. That would have popped a little more versus kind of clashing with the brass. But that's just. I me. agree with you. I think those if had those been either copper or black would have been nice. I'd like to see this with a black. DLC coated blade or something. So what's cool is there's about three or four different shard versions that are on the site right now. I don't know if we have a black blade version, but we've got one that has that beat up kind of uh, distressed look. It it looks like a um, it looks like Boba Fett. So it's got the copper inlay with a green titanium that drab green titanium handle on both sides, and it's really really nice there. That's cool. One hundred ninety six dollars at smkw.com. Of course, you can find that in the caption. Uh, of the video. It's that got a is nice a, solid clunk when it like it's a hard lock up. Too. It reminds me of a Re8 in that sense. Mm -hmm. It you can feel it lock up. It feels good. Like it. Nice. Moving on. Any questions about the shard? What are you laughing at? Well, we're discussing whether you're you or you're the cat and how nothing has been knocked off the table and nothing is unplugged, so you can't possibly be the cat. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. Let's jump into a knife that is a, a nice budget-friendly knife from Kaiser called the Dukes. It's a very light EDC. Uh, the action is superb on it, uh, to me at very least. This is a nice knife, going to ride easy in the pocket, super light. Uh, let's take a look at it up close right here on the table. Okay, you're talking about three inches. This is the right one this time, guys. Three inch N690 <laughs> stainless steel drop point blade. See that? It's actually a drop point. It's a nice wedge up top on that mm -hmm. too. Uh, it is 0.11 inches thick with the satin finish on this particular blade. It is a manual flipper with a ball bearing pivot as well. It is a liner lock. You guys can see that right in there. And it does have these skeletonized steel liners that are actually inside of those G10 handles. Red and black G10. I like it when they do that with G10. Kind of reminds me of some fancy SEs that we've seen lately. <laughs> uh, and this one does close down to 4.1875 inches. Why do we have all those numbers? That is 4.19 inches closed. That is the front. <laughs> that is the back. And then you're talking about 7.2 inches uh, fully open, which makes this a mid-size EDC. And then it weighs only 2.68 ounces, which is next to nothing. You're talking about $69 knife from Kaiser called oh. the Dukes uh, with ceramic ball bearings. I mean, I can't beat that. I'm going to pass that to you open. I like a knife that doesn't take up a lot of real estate in the pocket. Mm -hmm. and, and so I tend to carry a knife more whenever I, do, I don't feel like I'm carrying a Oh wait! Encyclopedia Britannica in my pocket. So I, this is a nice knife. The, the price point surprises me, especially for N690 at 69 bucks. I think this knife is though uh, slicey, uh, and you can see that by the 0.11 inch thickness and the top swedge makes it look even more slicey. It's got a bit of a hollow grind to it, doesn't it? I'm gonna let the experts on hollow grinds talk to me. I know that it does. Is it flat or is it hollow? Looks, looks hollow. Yeah. It's it does a, look a little bit hollow. It's, it's a little, a little convex as yeah, it comes into the grind. A little, a little hollow here. Yeah. It ought to be spicy. Nice, simple. It will cut. Lightweight. It is simple and lightweight. I think that's probably the most uh, yeah, that's the best thing you can say about it. If you're looking for an EDC that's not going to weigh down your pocket, 69 bucks for N690. Kaiser's been making some great little knives uh, just in this price range, and I think this one fits right in with the rest of them. I've always been impressed by their build quality. They do a nice job, mm -hmm. especially especially at that. I mean, you know, they have their high end knives and they have their middle nice. of the of the road knives at sixty nine dollars on this Dukes. Uh, the build quality is actually pretty nice. I've not heard any complaints about Kaiser, to be dead honest. Um, any questions, comments, thoughts? They concern? like that one. They like that one. So if we were to give one away, that has a vote right now, since we have a separate video give giveaway. Well, they've already them. voted for the shark. Oh, they've, well, they're not getting the shot. Of course they have. <laughs> Let's jump into the next one. Uh, this one you're going to find yourself between a Hurak and a Pard place. This is the Beyond <laughs> Hurak. The what? Hurak. Hurak. 
Harak. <laughs> knife naming is the worst <laughs> thing on the planet because you have to come up with an actual name. This is why you have, what, five, three, six. I'm guessing there's, that was a pretty easy trademark. <laughs> uh, probably, probably. It, it is one of the worst things about naming knives is you have to find a name that nobody has ever used before and then you have to search it out and do all that cool stuff. This is another mid-size EDC, probably closer to a full size when it opens up all the way to 8.5 inches. But you're talking about, this is a budget brand. This reminds me of Artisan. We first started carrying them. I'll bring it down here and we'll tell you about this one. I like it when they, they perk up and just go right to the, it's nice, right? That is a 3.75 inch D2 tool steel drop point blade with a stone wash finish. They do a good job of that on these knives. This thing is 0.16 inches thick. So you're talking about over an eighth, which is a nice uh, thick little uh, blade right there. It is a manual flipper. This also does have the ball bearings in it. Uh, it is a liner lock, stainless steel liners, tip up ambidextrous pocket clip. I love that they gave you a filler plate on that side mm -hmm. to put in. And then you've got a lanyard slot that's actually a little bit bigger that you could put almost whatever you wanted into that hole. Uh, even a wide band could go through that hole. There's what it looks like on the back with the integrated spacer that helps keep that uh, lanyard slot nice and steady. Uh, when you close this thing down, it is 4.75 inches. Here's the front of that knife. Again, here's another slim ride, almost full-size knife uh, against the side of your pocket. Uh, there is the back of that knife. Again, ceramic ball bearings on this thing, so you're coming up 8.5 inches overall, but this one's going to weigh in at 4.4 ounces, so you're a little bit heavier here, and it's probably because of those thick steel liners right there. Shane's messing with the other knives right now. What was the price on the Hurok? On the Hurok, it's $44.99, especially for D2. Go on. Go on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's not bad. That, I mean, to me, that's a... I mean, especially if you were looking for a knife, your buddy looks at your knives all the time and you want to hand somebody a knife. Um, are you pulling this china sticker off of it? No, I was just I looking at it. it. I didn't know I, in the camera. I you know, you give him one it. thing. Can't have nothing nice with us. <laughs> if you but give it to us, price, we're going to use it. For that price, if, if you lose it. I look at it this way. Christmas is coming. Yeah. Here's a $44 knife. You like your buddy enough and you want him to stop taking your knives out of your pocket. Well, that's a pretty good Christmas gift right there. And he can learn on it. That's he can nice. do whatever he wants with it. D2 tool steel is going to stay So you like him enough for that, but not enough yeah. for I, and that. I definitely, and definitely, definitely not, not enough that. for that. Right, right. That is for sure. I, I noticed deep pocket carry, which is cool. Yes. I wish more people did that. That would With a nice loop uh, over on the... So you could get that knife a little bit more out of sight. Agreed. Nice knife. Hard to beat for the money. $44.99, smkw.com. Nice knife. It's nice. finished well. It's got good hardware, too. That's what I keep noticing, and I, and I hate to say it this way, but we have some really nice stuff that's coming from overseas right now. They're getting better and better at what they do. Um, yes, there are a million arguments why not to buy that, but it is a good knife. I mean, it is what it is, and we're seeing better and better things come that way. It's finished well. I mean, like just the texture and the contour and, and of the how handle it feels matches, great. and uh, it's done well. Forty-four ninety-nine again. That is beyond EDC, you guys. If you haven't looked at that brand on the site, take a look at it. It is brand new to us. Brand new. It's about six months old to us. So we got it during the pandemic. The next knife on the table is probably my second favorite here, barring these. I think these are. I think, think I need to have one of these when they come out. Um, this CJRB Ria. It's just a fun little thumb stud knife. Look at that, Isaac. It's going to do it to me again. We filmed the get to the points last week, and I must have flicked this thing a half a bazillion times. And every time off camera, I could do that right there. And every time on camera, it just did not want to move Stage at all. Stage fright. This action on this, guys, and the way you have to get your thumb behind it reminds me totally of the CEO from CRKT. This knife, because it is the translucent G10, reminds me of every great toy you used to get in a Captain Crunch box. Uh, this would probably be the last toy you got from a Captain Crunch box, <laughs> if it did come in a Captain Crunch box. <laughs> <laughs> but you're talking about a $26 knife here, and before I put it down there, I'm going to let these guys see if they can get their thumb behind and flick it. I know we were doing it before the show. Come on, Shane. It's nice. First try. He set the bar can, I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> one and done. Break the wrist, walk away. And what was the steel on this one? That steel is actually uh, 12C27, and I'm not very familiar with that steel, to be dead honest. I'm going to guess it's probably, we have to talk to Steel Girl. Do you know that? 12C27. 12C27. What could it be compared to? Is it like N690? Is it in that same I'd kind of realm? I'd be willing to bet it's kind of a DG10 off the top of my head. Don't yell at me if I'm wrong. And that Ramalama Ding Dong still? Yep. Yeah, it's that Ramalama. Yes. Yeah. It's a high carbon. Oh, God. Fail. <laughs> 
You know what I like about that guy? I got greedy. I like that the blade gets fatter from the handle. It's got a nice belly. I like the, uh, yes. the blade shape to it. Yep. All right. All right. That will try. Oh! Stop. So hard about that. Just stop. <laughs> What's so hard about that? All right. Do two in a row. Okay. Bingo. Quit. You have a shape. Uh, see how it gets wider as it goes out towards the tip? That's just, yeah. I like that a lot. And 2C27, 12? 12C27. Okay. Bingo. <laughs> I like it. I, I think it's nice, especially for 26 bucks. We can show it down here, guys. I'm going to flip it on two if I can. Yep, there Bingo. we go. That's how quickly it goes. You're talking about 2.95 inches. And as we were talking up here at the top, you can see how that, that it's a drop point, but it swells out more as it goes further in the blade. So it's a fun shape. It's almost, it gives almost to be a spear out there. It's, it's gone swelled in the belly so much. Um, you 2.95 inches on the blade, 0.1 inches thick. So this is a true slicer. It is also a right friendly knife, not a left friendly knife. It only has the one thumb stud. It is a righty. It fits right in that slot on the handle. Removable, but not reversible tip up pocket clip. They call this translucent G10. Everybody out there knows it as something different, maybe natural G10, but you can actually see through it. You can see the skeletonized liners that are right there, including the liner lock. Uh, when you close this thing down, it goes all the way down to 3.9. Talk about an easy pocket carry with this particular knife. That's the front, that is the back, and then you're gonna open it up to 6.8, 6.86 inches overall, weighing it at only 2.12 ounces. Now guys, that is only $25.99 at smkw.com. Is it sharp though? Is it sharp? Can I do it on the, can I do it on two? Or can I do it on one? We'll see. That's three pieces of paper. Let's go to one. That's not yeah, bad for a twenty-six dollar knife. Wow. I'm okay, so now they know you're the cat. <laughs> uh, definitely the cat. <laughs> definitely the cat. That knife would, re without the pocket clip, uh -huh. that would do well in the pants too. Yeah. You yes. Know? Like just, it's just the the profile and all. Especially since it goes narrow up top. So I know a lot of times when. Um, so this narrowing as it goes top, a lot of times when you have a knife that gets too wide in your pocket, you're just banging your hand against mm -hmm. it constantly. You get down in there to grab your keys and out flies the whole thing. If you can get it to sit right up against the edge of your mm -hmm. pants pocket, it always feels that much better in your pocket. Yes, ma'am. 12C27 is what Mora uses in their Eldris. Nice. Cool. That's, a, that's a good thing to know. So in the Eldris, uh, in the Mora line, Mora knives, uh, that's what they're using is this same 12C27. Nice. That makes it even better in my opinion. Does it have a lanyard hole? Does it have a lanyard hole? It does. Check this out. Go two for me, Isaac. See that hidden lanyard hole right there? Ooh. Nice. CJRB is good at that. They put these in there all the time. It doesn't hurt the profile of your knife. You could also go through the pocket clip if you wanted to right there. But then you have in this, it is just a spacer that <laughs> has a hole right through it. Did somebody know that? That's why they wanted to see that? That's cool. No, somebody ask if they... That's nice. I haven't seen that before. Have you not? No. So there's a several several knives from uh, CJRB that do that. They'll either come on the on this side or on that side, and it's just basically a spacer yeah. with a cutout right through the center of it. Well, Chris Reeves uses the back bolster or the the pin basically and goes around it on on a lot of their knives as well. So on that, does he ever have problems with that blade touching? It's tolerance. It's Chris Reeves' knife. So. Okay. Yeah, so they took it's that not twenty six ninety nine. No, it's not. No, <laughs> they took that into account. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. J JB said that that's called a rotating lanyard post. A rotating lanyard post. This yes. thing? Yes. Does it move? Does it move around? I, I assume when you take it apart, it does. Okay. Normally, that's what rotating means. I, I assume. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> you never know what these knife people they I try to fool you. $25.99 at SMGW.com. A semi-rotating lamp means it doesn't go anywhere. It's fixed. Were you sinking? Uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm losing air. In my I'm riding the horse in the middle. My toes are about asleep. <laughs> Last knife of the day is a great, uh, it's one of my favorite traditional patterns. It is a sway back. It is that 2020 SHOT Show case put out a knife. It was a, only a knife that dealers could get. This was it. Tony Bowes designed this version of the, uh, the sway back. And this particular knife only went out to dealers. Uh, it is their black canvas Macarta stuff. You can go two for me, TC. Look at this thing right there. Now, they call this, 
Why do they always do this? Black canvas laminate sway back. And the reason they call it black canvas laminate is because they're afraid of the word micarta. That is a micarta handle on this thing. <laughs> it is fabulous, but micarta is actually a trademarked word, in case we all didn't know that. Talking about true sharp surgical steel blade on this. Nice worn cliff. Got the Tony Bowes etch right there in the center of the blade. Uh, you have nickel silver bolsters, nickel silver uh, badge shield, brass pins and liners. Thank you, Isaac. That was perfect. He remembered our notes from last time. Brass pins and liners. <laughs> and then this thing also comes with, ooh, I dropped it. It's in the floor. Don't worry about it. It's a, you get a certificate of authenticity because there were only a few of these made uh, out there. 3.188 inches closed on a swayback. So this thing rides in the pocket super easy. Uh, here's our fancy certificate of authenticity that you're going to get with this thing. And it weighs only about 2.2 ounces. Uh, it is a great little knife from Case, and it was. It, there's not a lot of these out there. Let's go back one on that. What do you think about Swayback? To me, it's one of my favorite traditional. You're not going to hurt my feelings if you don't like it. Most people, like Isaac told me last week when we did the Get to the Point, looks like they put the handle on backwards. <laughs> I have never used <laughs> one, never owned one. So it is fabulous for push cuts. Okay. And it is actually, they were actually developed for loom, uh, people who repaired looms back in the day. Ah. So you're talking about a, a pattern that came out of Sheffield, England, back when you know you were making tons of fabric on looms that way and not automated. Somebody had to crawl in there, and apparently that blade shape and that handle style was you perfect for that job. Room. Yeah, love the classic look to it, though. I love that Tony Bowes and every one of his designs for Case puts half stops, and I think that's always a very nice feature. I love this kind of knife because this is what got me into knives. And so my grandfather's case knife is like what I think of it. When mm -hmm. I think of a knife, that's what I remember because that's what kind of got me into the culture. I think there's room for carrying this with that and when you're going on your next adventure carrying that. I think that's what's awesome about the knife world at this point. Uh, you can carry this for your small everyday cut. You're covering up an apple. You're opening up a letter. It's classy. You can put it in your pocket for church. This is going to be your EDC there. It draws no attention to. Bingo. Bing that is so true. Because when you pop one of these out and somebody's not familiar with that and that happens, or especially this happens, they think you got a switchblade <laughs> yeah. on a Captain Crunch knife and that does or not. Or if it does like you did the other times, it's just defective and won't open. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then on this one, nobody's going to question that. Everybody knows what that is traditionally. You're talking about on this one, it's uh, hard to believe, $68.99 from smkw.com with a certificate of authenticity and all of that. There's not a lot of these. If you want one of these, you should probably get it. Like I said, it was a limited edition run that was made specifically for SHOT Show, which did not happen in 2020. So that's why we still have them in hand. What else? Anything? SHOT Show or Blade Show? It was made for SHOT. Oh. 2020 SHOT. I think it's actually on the... I've lost it again. Yep, yeah. shot, 2020 oh. shot. It was their shot knife. They always have Tony Bowes there doing it. Questions, comments, thoughts, concerns? Um, so we've had a discussion and since they're all watching with Essie here, mm -hmm. we're gonna do a special Essie swag bag for today's oh, that you're episodes. Gonna, yeah. So you're gonna give away an Essie, Essie swag bag as well? Yes. So in addition to the giveaway yes. that's going in the video, and in addition to the giveaway that I'm picking? Uh, the, no, the, the, the swag bag is just for today, people watching today on Facebook. Or okay, YouTube. for right now. Yeah, awesome. Okay. I have, I have Essie swag. Do you want Thank me you. to, I'm asking a question, do you want me to do another giveaway from these? You can give away the case if you want. I can? You can give away the case if you want. <laughs> Why is that? Because I said so. I guess that's a good reason to do <laughs> the, case is a, the case is a cool knife. Any other questions yeah. for these two guys? As, no, they just they just want to, don't want to see Patrick's face. Well, they're anymore. talking amongst each other, and they've been hilarious today. <laughs> have they been a good they crowd? Have been, they have sure. been fantastic. Okay, so. Yeah. I'll tell y'all later how fantastic. I, I think the case probably is the best option on top of that. We'll release a video and do this SE6 that they've used on Fireside separately. Keep an eye out for that. Isaac will get that to me, and we'll get that to you guys, and you'll get to enter to win that. Let's give away this case sway back before I tell you what you need to do for this so I can maintain your attention. We are brought to you by, S by, by Essie. Every week. <laughs> we sponsor good Every with it. Every week. 
They hand us stuff, we sell it, and it pays our paycheck. <laughs> no. We're brought to you by Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com. If you're not following us on Facebook, on Instagram, or on Twitter, or on YouTube, please do. If you do, join us on YouTube regularly. Ring that notification bell. Subscribe to the channel. That way you're going to get notified every time it happens. Follow these guys on Instagram. Follow these guys on uh, in, uh, Face Facebook as well, and yeah. YouTube. Facebook as well, and YouTube as well. I've tried. I've been trying to. I've been doing your captions for your fireside stuff. So I've been trying to link you guys Ooh, thank you. to your different stuff, so they can, you can get to everybody in there. When you see the fireside come up, we've got the next one coming up Friday. Next Friday. Next Friday. Isaac slowed down on this one. <laughs> every two weeks. Every two weeks. Maybe I should read a schedule every once in a while. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next week you'll have another Fireside video drop out. And make sure you can see that on there. Follow these guys on all the different places. I always like having you guys in the studio. It's always fun. Uh, I look forward to uh, seeing what you do on the Fireside series and that kind of stuff. Um, I hope that when Isaac, when you're out there with Isaac, that you teach him how to grow his calf muscles just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and help him out out there. No, actually, what I want to see is some of the cool uh, um, building things. Like when you guys are building some of the shelter stuff. Yeah. I want to see some of that. I want to see how you're putting, and I think a lot, of, I don't need you to do a whole shelter. I don't think that's probably important enough to do all that. But I want to see how you're doing some of these lashing points and different things on a shelter with different materials. We can do it. I think that would be awesome to know because all of us sit out there in the woods every once in a while and go, hey. How would I put this together if I were stuck out here for any amount of time and all I had was my shoelaces in my <laughs> shoe and that kind of thing. So I appreciate you guys coming in and doing all of that. Uh, we're going to give away this case way back. Uh, I need you guys to, what do we need to do? What are we going to do today? What is going to be the thing they do to comment? I don't know. I don't do that part. You told me to give away this knife. What's your favorite essay? What's your favorite Essie knife? Okay. That'll be your okay entry to win this way back. What is your favorite Essie knife? So the put that in a comment, and then we will draw randomly we'll and give you something that's not an Essie at all, this case <laughs> sway back right here. But they have a chance to win an Essie. <laughs> they do. They do have a chance to win an Essie. He's going to hammer that all day. Isn't he? Okay, guys, we're going to get out of here again. We're brought to you by Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com. Of course, TC and Isaac have been running the board over there. Melina has been Thank answering you. all of your questions as much as possible. This is Shane Adams. He's a good guy right from SE. He is the utility director. Utility thingy. player. Player. <laughs> yeah. Thing of Bob is Patrick Rollins. If you ever go do one of the courses, you're probably going to run into this guy oh, yeah. at uh, Randall's Adventure and Training. I'm Andy. I'll catch you guys next time. We'll be here Thursday for episode 142. Out of here. Catch you next time. <laughs>